Great, welcome back. So in the last tutorial, we covered rotation data, daily rotation, we defined it, what it means, how it's calculated, and where in the FTP analytics repository you can find it for any given Darwin. We also showed you this interface where we've combined data from the Darwin API, as well as the FTP analytics repository, and this data being the quote of the Darwin, the underlying strategy's cumulative return, the daily rotation data, as well as the Darwin versus EURUSD volatility data. In this tutorial, we'll run through the code for how this is done to give you an idea of how you can go about unifying data sources like this and creating um, custom solutions of your own, whereby you can visualize data that uh, may permit you to make better or more informed decisions as regards investing in your Darwin or Darwin's of choice. Uh, this same approach can also, of course, be automated, significantly scaling your ability to analyze multiple Darwin's simultaneously and getting uh, amalgamated results as opposed to just visualizing one chart and uh, one Darwin, of course, at a time. So for this, we'll go through some code or revisit some code that we've discussed previously. All the API code that you already have available to you on GitHub uh, is, of course, available in this environment. Off that code, we'll be taking a look at the DWX Info API in particular, as this is what we'll be calling from our example solution here to get uh, the data we need into one chart. We'll also be implementing functions from the Plotly graphics library that's available to you via Conda or the Python package index. In terms of structuring the data, Getting it first and then structuring the data for delivery onto this chart that we just saw, you'll need to access the DWX Info API class that will allow you to connect to our servers and using your credentials and access tokens, allow you to download data for your Darwin of choice. From, from visiting previous tutorials where we covered the get, get historical quotes functionality in this class, you'll know that symbols accepts a list and this list will then return to you a data frame of Darwin's that you supply here each column representing the quote history of each Darwin in your list. For now, we'll use one Darwin, since this is a demonstration for amalgamating data into one chart from two sources. The first thing we'll do is simply call uh, the get historical quotes function, create an instance of the DWX Info API object. This will in the background go away and uh, start um, authenticating via OAuth2 and uh, leave you an object that you can then use to call this function and get the data. Once we have the quotes data for our Darwin of choice, in this case, we'll use LVS as our example. We can then proceed to the second part where we're going to access data from a different data source, this being the FTP repository. Here we'll supply rotation as the data type, and you'll know from previous tutorials that data type specification conforms to the file name of the, uh, the data set. So in this case, that's daily rotation specified by the name rotation. So we'll put that over here. And as we saw in the previous tutorial on rotation uh, data, how to get it, what it looks like, how to construct a data frame out of it, you'll know that setting data frame to true for the function get data will convert this into a data frame that you can then set up columns for and do some further post processing as we are here. In our case here, we repeat the two steps we did in the previous tutorial, create the columns, get the data, create the columns, and then we set the timestamp to the index of this data frame and convert it into a pandas date time as opposed to milliseconds. And then finally, we get two additional pieces of information, these being the Darwin versus your USD volatility data and the underlying strategy return. This allows us to put four data series on our chart, all aligned over one x-axis of time. And this includes the quote, underlying strategy return, daily rotation, and Darwin versus your USD volatility. Once we have all of this information, it's time to plot it. And here some Plotly magic comes into the picture. We'll first create the data dictionary for Plotly. Uh, that will start with a scatter chart, and we'll initialize this with the quotes uh, for Darwin LVS in our example. We'll then create a slightly more complex layout where we'll set up a range selector, set up some domains uh, because there are going to be multiple data series on our chart. So we'll set up a domain in terms of how much space does one data series occupy on the chart from where to where. Once we've done that, we'll do some additional cosmetics, orientation, setting up font names and uh, sizes as well as colors titles, etc. And here's where we'll append the data that we got previously from the API as well as the FTP repository via Python onto this existing figure object that we've created in Plotly. 
will first append the Darwin's underlying strategy return, the cumulative return. We'll then append the rotation data. And finally, we'll append the Euro US, Darwin versus EURUSD volatility data, specifying different colors for each so that we can see them distinctly on this chart. And that's very much it. Plotly makes it really simple to simply create a figure object and recursively append data to it for as many um, data series as you'd like on the chart and uh, specify domains above in the figure layout to accommodate them appropriately. Finally, once that is done, we'll set up a range select that you probably noticed over here. And all of this is to just give you an example of how quick it is to create nice, meaningful visualization environments for yourself in Python using the Darwin API as well as the FTP data analytics repository together. It's very, very fast. And we'll obviously put this code up for you open source on GitHub as well, so you can use this and build on top of it. The range selector sets up those um, timeframes that we can then conveniently loop through to see the same data set, see parts of the same data sets over time. In this case, we've specified seven timeframes for you to choose from. You can, of course, specify any uh, precision of time frame or any number of time frames as suits your particular purposes. And finally, once that is all done, we append the range selector to the existing x-axis layer and plot the figure. And that's pretty much it. That results in the chart you see here. The very first thing we got was the quote, and the other three we got from the data repository, unifying this data into one interface to allow us to visually inspect patterns. In future tutorials, we'll go through how to algorithmically assess patterns uh, and build on top of this solution for both doing some more complex um, analysis visually as well as algorithmically. And we'll also go through the remainder of our style attributes. These include tr getting trades and positions data. See you in the next tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.